Welcome to this section, sharing code with the render props pattern. In this video, I will introduce the render props pattern. The objectives of this video are to introduce the render props pattern. I'll explain the benefits of utilizing this pattern. And lastly, we'll discuss the concerns when utilizing the render props pattern. The render props pattern is a pattern where component props are assigned a function. And this function is called in the render method of a component. Calling the function can return a React element or a component to render. This is a popular code sharing technique. And in short, it's using a prop that's a function to make reusable code across components. The common structure for this will look something like this. I have a constant at the top that mocks some form of data called data to display. And in this case, it's set to a string called the data. Then under that, I have a functional component called component data provider. This is where the render prop functionality happens. My component will destructure a function from this object called render. It does not have to be called render, but for simplicity, I will call it that. My function then returns a view component. And within that component, I will use a JSX expression to call the render function that was passed in with the argument of data to display. So what's happening here is our component is accepting a function as a property that will instruct component data provider on how to render the data passed in. The next step to implementation is to create a component to provide the render functionality. In our example, this component is called component to provide render. Component to provide render is a functional component that will return component data provider, but define the render property. As referenced before, this render property will be a function that returns a React element for display. So in this example, Render will pass in data as an argument and return a text component that displays the data. Another approach to utilizing this pattern is passing in what you would like to be displayed as children to your function. In this example, our component data provider will perform some logic within a JSX expression. And the component to provide render will return it as a function. And the implementation will stay the same. Let's move on to the benefits of adopting this pattern. To start, it encourages more portable code to be written, which leads to more code sharing across components and increased productivity. With both class components and functional components, this pattern, for the most part, can abstract imperative logic and make it more declarative. So it's clear what a component's role is in this pattern, and there are no naming collision issues for props and there's no need to deal with boilerplate code since we are working with simple functions for the most part. In terms of sharing code and common logic, render props is an excellent approach. But before implementing this practice into your code base, there are some concerns that should be discussed amongst your team or taken into consideration. Render props callback does not look clean in JSX since it needs to be wrapped in an expression. So code could be difficult to read and may need to be read through a couple of times before grasping what is actually going on within the component. The code does not read well, so those who aren't familiar with the pattern may have some trouble understanding. There is a learning curve to this concept.